Good evening and welcome. Welcome to Our Lady of Good Counsel Parish, especially those joining us today from other places. We thank God you have joined us to worship Christ as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we bring ourselves and our lives to the altar today, we invite you to please rise and share any personal intentions or prayers of thanksgiving with your family. Our celebrant is Bishop Battersby. OLGC is most pleased to welcome our auxiliary bishop to celebrate this mass with us. Let us now take a moment to prepare our hearts to encounter Jesus in this, the most holy sacrifice of the mass. Give peace, Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, 
Good evening. Your Excellency, the very stones of this church love to hear your bold, joyful, enthusiastic proclamation of the gospel, and so do the hearts of the faithful here at Our Lady of Good Counsel. We are honored for your presence, and we are looking forward to you proclaiming boldly the good news of Jesus Christ and his victory through his cross. Thank you for being here, Your Excellency. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we come together on this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time where we celebrate the exaltation of the Holy Cross as we are about to dedicate the Stations of the Cross for this parish church. We remember that the essence of discipleship is walking in the path of the master to sharing with him every intimacy even his passion so that we might share in his resurrection we take a moment as we enter this sacrifice to call to mind our sins that we might more worthily and freely celebrate these mysteries You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer, suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherish, cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. To you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should be paid back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Can I get this close? I'll try not to enunciate too much. I was looking in the dictionary recently, and I came across a definition. I, got a, I had to write it down because I can't remember it. It's, it's worth hearing. Anger is the passion for revenge, which goes beyond the control of reason. That's St. Thomas Aquinas. Anger is the passion for revenge, which goes beyond the control of reason. We know there's different types of anger, right? Jesus had righteous anger when he cleared the temple. But then there's sinful anger, which is beyond the control of reason that seeks revenge. Forgiveness is something else altogether. In light of the Paschal mystery, forgiveness for all the baptized is the bearing of another's burden. It is the bearing of another's burden. It is an imitation of Christ. It is a manifestation of the divine. For you know that it is when love meets wretchedness, it is revealed as mercy. Corey Ten Boom was a young girl when the Nazis rolled into the Netherlands, into her city, Amsterdam. Her family ran a clockmaker's shop in the city. And as the persecutions and the deportations of the Jews in that city occurred, she and her family were sent to the famous or infamous Ravensbrück camp. Corey survived, but none of her family, including her sister Betsy, did not. In years following the war, Corey spent her time going throughout Europe preaching reconciliation and forgiveness. Remarkable when you think about it. She had a profound faith in Jesus. And she felt it her duty to bear witness to him, even amidst the horrific suffering that she and her family endured. One day in Germany, in Munich, she had given her talk and after her talk, a man wanted to meet her. And as he walked up to her, she could see him and froze. He was a concentration camp guard at Ravensbrück. In fact, he was the guard who used to stand in the showers as the ladies showered. He put out his hand to her as a sign of reconciliation, and she froze. She couldn't take his hand. She was revulsed at the idea. She didn't know what to do. And she said, Jesus, I can't forgive him. Please give me your forgiveness. With that, she said it was like someone took her hand and placed it in the camp guard's hand, and reconciliation began. You see, one of the reasons we get forgiveness wrong is we think it's about us. But nothing is about us anymore. It's about Jesus. And we are his witnesses. 
You know, there's only three things we need to know. We need to know that Jesus is risen, that he is Lord, and we his witnesses. And if we understand that, if we understand what the Lordship of Christ means, then our day is new and our horizon is different because we are people of hope. We live our lives in the light of the resurrection. We live our lives as men and women who know that our Redeemer lives, who know that we are his witnesses. All of us have been hurt, some most grievously, like Corey. All of us have been wounded by others. All of us in one manner or another likely hold unforgiveness and hold hostage others who have hurt us. You know, I had an experience in my own family. I called a family member when my mother died to let him know that my mother had died. Now, I was wild about my mother. It's kind of normal for a son or a daughter. I didn't expect this person to feel about my mother the way I felt about her. When I told him my mother died, he said, well, she didn't bother me much. Not, I'm sorry your mother died. Not, oh, that's sad. But it became about him. And I handled it like a good Christian man. I hung up the phone and never talked to him again. (laughs) And then he died. And he was out of town, so I didn't have to make the hypocrites walk at this funeral home. But a couple of years ago, I had a dream, and I was sitting on a couch in a room with all my family, and this man came up to me, and he asked if he could sit down, and he sat down next to me, and he said, can I be forgiven? And I said, well, of course you can be forgiven. That's ridiculous. He said, good, and he got up. And he went down the stairs, and I didn't see him again. But when I woke up, I was free. And he was free of my judgment. You know, one of the things that being a Christian does is it helps us see things from a different perspective. And we, because we always seek to see what Jesus sees, to Act as Jesus acts, to imitate our master. That's our role. We forget our dignity sometimes. You know, the reason the Lord gives us the Eucharist, the reason the Lord gives us the sacrament of confirmation, the vocation of marriage, is he wants us to make us like him. He wants to make us like him. And so the first question we should ask is not, what I would do, but what would Jesus do? You know, why is it that we forget to do that? Well, sometimes the pain that we've endured is so much that it just blocks out our ability to forgive. Sometimes that's the case. And in those moments, we have to ask Jesus, like Corey did, to give us his forgiveness, because we just don't have it. We have to remember the multiple times that God has forgiven us. When we were thoughtless or unkind. And thirdly, we have to look at things in a new light. We have to try and look at things the way Jesus did. To see not people who hurt him, 
in any other way but brothers and sisters who had taken a wrong road, who had failed to love. See, my brothers and sisters, we are to be instruments of Christ. We are to be living tabernacles of the Most High as we leave this church. And we bear his presence into the world. And what prevents us from doing that is unforgiveness. It blocks us. You know the truth. No one has to tell you. Unforgiveness doesn't hurt our enemy. It hurts us. It binds us. It handicaps us. Jesus wants us to unloose our enemies so that we can be freed, so that we can walk in the hope and the freedom of our Lord. You know, one of the things when we talk about forgiveness, and we talk about bearing someone's burden, I saw Bishop Barron gave a great example. He said, you know, when there's been a wrong, we want justice. And justice is right. And he said justice means that each side gives a little and says I'm sorry and comes back together. He said, Christian forgiveness is different. Christian forgiveness is that we even bear the burden of our brothers and sisters who have erred, who have sinned, so that they too might enjoy freedom. You see, it's different. It's a quality of difference. It's an imitation of Christ. And what we might not do for our neighbor, we surely will not withhold from Jesus. Think about your life. I'm sure there's someone in your life that you have held bound, and maybe they richly deserved it. If bringing them to mind fills you with revulsion, then lay that on the altar today. Tell Jesus you need his forgiveness before you can hope to want to forgive that person. And ask him to give you the grace to imitate him, to follow him even unto the cross, because you know that the end is not death, but resurrection. Amen? <clears throat> Let us stand then together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, then, in our Father's love, we turn to him and offer our prayers through Christ our Lord.
for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and deacons, may they be encouraged, strengthened, and confirmed in the truth to courageously proclaim the gospel in word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant our country and all nations your help, O Lord, and convert all wayward souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of those suffering from natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us today our daily bread and provide for all the needs of hungry children around the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant our parish family the grace to see others with the eyes of Jesus and to respond generously with his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Help the sick and those who care for them. Grant them the grace of uniting their sufferings to Jesus' saving cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant eternal life to those who have died, especially Eric Cullen, Father Peter Brent, and all the holy souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered, the intentions of Father Edward Zorowski and peace in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are your sons and daughters, and we have been made so by the blood of the Lamb. We ask you, Father, that just as you have forgiven us in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we ask that we too forgive those who trespass against us. We ask you, Lord, to forgive our nation for all the sins we've committed, that we too may be free to proclaim your name, to live in your love, to be your witnesses. And we ask this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy spirit. May this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, of all our sins through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And you lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you place the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne, blessed Solanus Casey, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our bishop, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Sing that we bless. 
Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. been an honor to be with you and so after, right after immediately after mass before the procession out um, we're going to have the blessing of the, uh, the stations of the cross and then we'll go to each individual uh, station as we're praying and um, once they're unveiled to sprinkle them with holy water and then pray that that station so I'm, I'm delighted to have celebrated the Eucharist to you I think Saint Monica's words always can be our words Remember me at the holy altar. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking souls. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve.
Good evening. My name is Bill Brewis, and I'm the uh, Parish Council Chairman, and I've been asked to come up and uh, just give a brief introduction about the Stations of the Cross. Um, before that, I want to recognize that a hundred years ago, when this parish began, a global war had just ended, and over nine million soldiers were killed. The Spanish flu pandemic spread throughout the world, and 20 million people died. There was revolution in China, Russia, Germany, Turkey, Austria-Hungary, Mexico, and Portugal, with the rise of communism, fascism, and Freemasonry, all of their focusing efforts on attacking the Catholic Church. The immigration influx into the United States of United unwanted Catholics in 1920, two million Italian immigrants came to the United States. By 1924, two million additional Eastern Europeans, mostly Polish, had come to the U.S. There was a technology explosion. Movies, radio, record players, telephones, televisions, home appliances, and transportation were all those industries created in that time, 100 years ago. Women were granted the, wrote the right to vote. The evolution theory was on trial and eugenics was a popular social dogma. In social life, prohibition had come into play, entertainment had exploded with movies, and family life was sh shook up. In the church 100 years ago, Benedict reigned as Pope, Benedict the 15th, that is. He had concerns for the 30 million Catholic immigrants who had left Europe, Ireland, Italy, Eastern Europe for the United States. The church was discerning the appearance and messages of Our Lady at Fatima, Portugal, in 1917. Mass was in Latin, and priests and religious were in abundance. Mass attendance was estimated at about 80% for U.S. Catholics. By 1920, the United States Catholics grew to be the largest denomination in the United States and were hated by the KKK. In our parish 100 years ago, a mass was performed on uh, Palm Sunday, 1915, at Grange Hall on Union Street. And for five years, there was a mission by the Church of Milford St. Mary who came here and prayed mass monthly. In 1920, $4,200 was raised by 30 families to buy the first church. And on November 27th, 1920, the first Mass was celebrated by Father Francis Lefevre. Amidst a pandemic, world war, government revolutions, political upheaval, anti-Catholic hatred, technology explosion, changing family dynamics, a group of 30 families offered a gift of love from their finances to begin a new church in Plymouth. How familiar is this story? What legacy are we called to leave for the church tomorrow? and the next hundred years. As this year-long celebration of our parish family in Plymouth continues, on this, the vigil of the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, we will unveil the new Stations of the Cross. Two spiritual themes for this year, from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, do whatever he tells you, and then his time in the Passion when he says to John and to us, behold your mother. Bishop Battersby has offered the sacrifice of the Mass. In a moment, he will bless the stations, they will be revealed, and we will pray using quotes from Divine Mercy in My Soul, the diary of St. Faustina Kowalska. We continue to beatify our church over the years by adding statues and images of saints and angels who intercede for us. These additions remind us that we have advocates in heaven praying for us. Now we have the blessing of the new Stations of the Cross. Although these works of art are from Europe and over a hundred years old, were recovered from a closed parish on the east side of Detroit. Thanks to the diligence of Dave Elsie, they were given to the parish at no cost, but needed to be repaired and repainted before being installed. The original mosaic Stations of the Cross from the church on Penniman are being moved to the walking track on the upper level of the gym so that those who use that space may pray while exercising. We look forward to seeing you in the church and praying the Stations of the Cross more frequently. Let us now allow the bishop to bless the Stations of the Cross, 
so that we may, in our prayers, encounter Jesus and the Blessed Virgin Mother together and share him with the world. Send forth your spirit, and all things shall be recreated, and, and you, you shall, shall renew the face of the earth. earth. Let us pray. God, who instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, guide us by your spirit to desire only what is good and so always to find joy in his comfort. Lord, we beg you to protect this people from every adversity by the intercession of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, as they bow down fervently before your shield. Before you, shield them by your benevolence from all the wiles of the enemy. We beg you, Lord, let a breath of your grace prompt our undertakings and guide them along their course so that our least prayer and work may begin in you and end in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, who do not forbid us to carve or paint likenesses of your saints, in order that whenever we look at them with our bodily eyes, we may call to mind their holy lives and resolve to follow in their footsteps. May it please you to bless, hallow these images, which have been made in memory and honor of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and grant that all who in their presence may pay devout homage to your only begotten Son, may by his merits and primacy obtain your grace in this life and everlasting glory in the life to come through christ our lord amen we adore you o christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have in the world. let us pray god who by the illustrious suffering of your son taught us to arrive at everlasting glory by the way of the cross Grant that we, who devoutly unite ourselves with him on Calvary, may reign triumphantly with him in glory. We ask this of him who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold the standard of the King. The cross gleams forth its mystery. On it the Son of God as man atoned on earth for sinners all. His side was pierced by cruel lands that drew out water with his blood to cleanse our souls from every stain and nourish them with its pure stream. O tree that shines with beauty rare, ennobled by Christ's precious blood, he chose you as the royal bed to rest his sacred limbs in death. Because by your you have redeemed us. Children kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward.
Do not be surprised that you are sometimes unjustly accused. I myself first drank this cup of undeserved suffering for the love of you. When I was before Herod, I obtained a grace for you, namely, that you would be able to rise above human scorn and follow faithfully in my footsteps. We are sensitive to words and quickly want to answer back without taking any regard as to whether it is God's will that we should speak. A silent soul is strong. No adversities will harm it if it perseveres in silence. The silent soul is capable of attaining the closest union with God. Together, e let us pray. Eternal Father, I, I offer, offer you the body and blood, blood soul, soul and, and divinity, divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Stabat Mater Dolorosa, Juxta Crucem Lacrimosa, Dum Pendebar Fili, The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he, Pilate, said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Do not be afraid of suffering. I am with you. The more you will come to love suffering, the purer your love for me will be. Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions, for humiliations at the hands of others, for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for dying to myself, for lack of recognition in everything, for the upsetting of all my plans. Together, let us pray. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ for atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have me in the world. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. My daughter, Write that involuntary offenses of souls do not hinder my love for them or prevent me from uniting myself with them. 
But voluntary offenses, even the smallest, obstruct my graces, and I cannot lavish my gifts on such souls. O oh my Jesus, how prone I am to evil, and this forces me to be constantly vigilant. But I do not lose heart. I trust God's grace, which abounds in the worst misery. Together, let us pray. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Quam tristis et afflicta, huit ila benedicta, mater unigeniti. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce. Listen, although all the works that come into being by my will are exposed to great sufferings, consider whether any of them has been subject to greater difficulties than the work which is directly mine the work of redemption. You should not worry too much about adversities. I saw the Blessed Virgin. She held me close to herself and said to me, be courageous. Do not fear apparent obstacles, but fix your gaze upon the passion of my son, and in this way you will be victorious. Together let's pray. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. I permit adversities in order to increase merit. I do not reward for good results, but for the patience and hardship undergone for my sake. O oh my Jesus, you do not give a reward for the sex successful performances of a work, but for the goodwill and labor undertaken. Therefore, I am completely at peace even if all my undertakings and efforts should be thwarted or should come to naught. If I do all that is in my power, the rest is not my business. Together, let's pray. Eternal, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
Have mercy on us and on the whole world. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, no appearance nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom men hide their faith, faces spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Know that whatever good you do to any soul, I accept it as if you had done it to me. I am learning how to be good from Jesus, from him who is goodness itself, so that I may be called a daughter of the Heavenly Father. Great love can change small things into great ones, and it is only love which lends value to all our actions. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer Father, you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Quis non posset contristari, Christem matrem contemplari, dolentem cum filio. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Yes, it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken as one smitten by God and afflicted. The cause of your fall is that you rely too much upon yourself and too little on me. Without special help from me, you are not even capable of accepting my graces. Jesus, do not leave me alone. You know, Lord, how weak I am. I am an abyss of wretchedness. I am nothingness in itself. So what will be so strange if you Leave me alone, and I fall. So you, Jesus, must stand by me constantly, like a mother by a helpless child, and even more so. Together, let, let us pray. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The eighth station, 
Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women, who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves. Oh, how pleasing to me is living faith. I desire that you would all have more faith at the present time. I fervently beg the Lord to strengthen my faith so that in my drab everyday life, I will not be guided by human dispositions, but by those of the Spirit. Oh, how everything drags man toward the, <coughs> towards the earth, but lively faith maintains the soul in the higher regions and assigns self-love its proper place, that is to say, the lowest one, altogether. Eternal, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The night station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. My child, Know that the greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and an exaggerated anxiety. These will deprive you of the ability to practice virtue. I am always ready to forgive you. As often as you beg for it, you glorify my mercy. My Jesus, despite your graces, I see and feel all my misery. I begin my day with battle and end it with battle. As soon as I conquer one obstacle, ten more appear to take its place. But I am not worried because I know that this is the time of struggle, not peace. Altogether, Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross. When the soldiers took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier, they also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be in order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus was suddenly standing before me, stripped of his clothes, his body completely covered with wounds, his eyes flooded with tears and blood, his face disfigured and covered with spittle. The Lord then said to me, the bride must resemble her betrothed. I understood these words to their very depths. 
There is no room for doubt here. My likeness to Jesus must be through suffering and humility. All together. Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because of your holy cross. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. My pupil, have great love for those who cause you suffering. Do good to those who hate you. Oh, my Jesus, you know what efforts are needed to live sincerely and unaffectedly with those from whom our nature flees, or with those who, deliberately or not, have made us suffer. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. At such times, more than at others, I try to discover the Lord Jesus in such a person. And for this same Jesus, I do everything for such people. All together. Eternal, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Sancta Mater stood agas, Uci fixi fige plagas, or dime o valide. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. All this is for the salvation of souls. Consider well what you are doing for their salvation. Then I saw the Lord <clears throat> nailed to the cross. When he had hung on it for a while, I saw a multitude of souls crucified like him. Then I saw a second multitude of souls and a third. The second multitude were not nailed to their crosses but were holding them firmly in their hands. The third were neither nailed to their crosses nor holding them firmly in their hands, but were dragging their crosses behind them and were discontent. Do you see these souls? Those who are like me in the pain and contempt they suffer will 
be like me in glory. And those who also resemble me less in pain and com contempt will also bear less resemblance to me in glory. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Tu vinati vulnerati, tam dignati prolepati, enas mecum divide. The 13th station. We adore you, O Christ. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts but all his acquaintances stood at a distance. Most dear to me is the soul that strongly believes in my goodness and has complete trust in me. I heap my confidence upon it and give it all it asks. I fly to your mercy, compassionate God, who alone are good. Although my misery is great and my offenses are many, I trust in your mercy because you are the God of mercy, and from time immemorial it has never been heard of, nor do heaven or earth remember that a soul trusting in your mercy has been disappointed. Together, Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your own cross you have redeemed the world. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with this burial cloth, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. You are not yet in your homeland, so go, fortified by my grace, and fight for my kingdom in human souls. Fight as a king's child would, and remember that the days of your exile will pass quickly and with him the possibility of earning merit for heaven. I expect from you a great number of souls who will glorify my mercy for all eternity. Every soul you have entrusted to me, Jesus, I will try to aid with prayer and sacrifice so that your grace can work in them. <clears throat> o oh, great lover of souls, my Jesus, I thank you for the immense confidence with which you have deigned to place souls in our care. Together, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. Juxta crucem tecum stare, et me tibi sociare, in plac tu desidero. O blessed were your rugged arms, from which the whole world's ransom hung. You bore the weight of sacrifice that snatched from greedy hell its prey. Hail, holy altar, victim, hail, for all the glory of that cross by which life chose and welcomed death, and dying gave us life once more. Oh, my Jesus, my only, my only hope, hope, thank you, you for, for the book which, which you have opened before my soul's eyes. That book, that book is, is your, your passion, passion which, which you underwent, underwent for the love of me. me. It, it is from, from this book that I have learned how to love God and souls. In this book there are found for us inexhaustible treasures. O oh Jesus, how few souls understand you in your martyrdom of love. Happy the soul that has come to understand the love of the heart of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you for attending this evening's Mass and prayers of the Stations of the Cross and blessing. We want you to know that uh, it's our opportunity now to go out and share this with others and to be aware that there will be in October another event celebrating the 100-year anniversaries of our parish. Thank you. God bless you. Hail, Holy Cross, our only hope. Wash all our guilt and crimes away. Increase our grace while we adore. In honor of your victory. Let every soul sing in your praise. Salvation's found, O Trinity. Forever cherish those redeemed through that great mystery, the cross.